Today at Speedy's Garage, we're going to try to repair our four-wheel drive system. To perform this repair, you're going to need a multimeter that has continuity, a ratchet, and 27 millimeter socket to start. We had our first major snow in Middle Tennessee in over 13 years. And when I hop in the Forerunner to use the four-wheel drive system, I got the flashing four-wheel drive light of death. Basically, all four wheels flashed green and the center differential light flashed orange but the four-wheel drive system would never engage. This 2002 model has the push button four-wheel drive system on the stick that's used to go to four low. In troubleshooting something like this you want to start with the easy stuff. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the four-wheel drive fuse which is this bottom one. I think you can see that it is definitely good. And if you look on the back of the panel you'll see them labeled so that's good we're going to move on to the next thing which will be disconnecting the battery okay so I disconnected the negative battery terminal left it for about five minutes hooked it back up and the problem persists so that didn't solve it either and if you need to disconnect your battery if you want to uh, try this step it's just a little 10 millimeter bolt so this is probably going to be a little bit hard to see but there's your transfer case actuator there's on this 2002 model it's a six pin flat plug and right behind it are two electronic switches that are known to be a common problem here so just get your 27 millimeter socket on there gently break it loose and once you get it removed just clean it up good and then you want to check it with your multimeter set to continuity this is what my Milwaukee one looks like. What that does is that tells you when you've got a circuit. It gives you a beep. And what you want to do is you can see how this little uh, solenoid, they call it a switch or a sensor, but I think it's really just a, it's a, it's really a switch, I guess is the best way to describe it. When it's energized, that will pull back. And you want to have continuity <clears throat> between those two pins when the little check ball there is depressed. So we're going to try to set up where you can see this. We're going to check it and see how we do. Okay, we're not getting anything. So that leads me to believe that this particular switch has gone bad. Now I'm going to see if I can save it. I had some mass airflow cleaner, which is really just a very clean um, electrical contact cleaner for sensitive devices. And I'm just going to spray some of that on it. And work it. And I won't be able to film it, but I'm also going to spray some and press this button and see if that improves the functionality. Okay, now let's retest. May have gotten lucky. We're going to stick it back in the truck and see if that fixed it. Installation is just the reverse of removal. Just be careful not to over tighten. And then plug your harnesses back in, obviously. And now it's happy again. I got lucky today and was able to fix my problem for free. But even if that solenoid had been bad, or that switch rather, I could have gone down and picked one up uh, at the dealer for about, uh, I think they're about 80 bucks. So still not a very expensive solution. Now if I had checked those solenoids um, on the back of the transfer case and found that they were both good, I would have moved to the ones that are on the front top part of the transfer case. Uh, some people are able to get to those from underneath the vehicle. Other folks choose to remove the center console to remove those extra two uh, switches and check those the same way I did the ones that I checked. Um, luckily I didn't have to go that far. If all of that checks out, then you want to check the actuator on the front differential and see if it's the issue. And finally, if that checks out, the last thing you're going to want to look at is the little motor that was just underneath the uh, switches that I replaced 
or took out and replaced rather. And that motor um, actually has an integral part to the transfer case. So if you end up having to get into replacing that, it can get expensive. So you want to start with just the little motor assembly that's off to the side. I've read that um, sometimes that can actually solve the problem. And if you end up having to get into the actual transfer case actuator, you're cheaper to just buy a new transfer case from a salvage yard and swap the transfer cases out. I hope that helps. So that was a cheap and easy fix, and now we can go have some more fun in the snow. If you want to see some more repair information and how-to, visit my website, www.speedysgarage.net.